So the switching board here switches a couple of different things. And for our sake, I'm gonna go point the camera at that monitor so we can see what's going on. So we'll take our secondary camera and bring it back here. And then on this one, we're gonna wanna change the iris way up so we can at least see it. Okay, so camera two. All right, so there's there's our monitor there. We can see we actually have something on it, but then we're also recording something to it. So, all right, here's our playback. Here's our color correction monitor. And then on the this monitor screen, what we're actually seeing in the background is the monitor that's out there. So, back to the auxes I was talking about. Aux one will allow you to switch here what comes out on the different monitors. So if we're just dealing with this monitor right here, aux one, we're gonna select the input here. So we have input of camera one, camera two. Uh, if we had some playback stuff, it would be on these. Actually, I do have some playback stuff, so let me switch this over. If we go to two, which is something we can see on camera two here, Go back to aux 2, and then now we have the ability to switch the inputs. So on that TV monitor out there that's in the green screen room, we have that coming in. We have the ability to switch it to other inputs. Um, our program and preset are going to be what we see up here. So preview allows you to switch cameras here, and then if you do auto transition or cut, it will take whatever the camera is that's selected next. So underneath our program and preview, program's running camera one right now, and our preview's running camera two. So if we do a cut, it will automatically cut between the two. Pretty straightforward. All right, so in short, that's that. If we come over to our video world here, uh, so we have playback, and record. On this Grass Valley switcher, this top section right here is recording, and then the bottom two are playback. Um, if we close the Panasonic down. Okay, so we left off on the recording and playback of stuff. Um, I'm going to try and go over the system as best I can. Uh, we still have the recording, we have the playback one, playback two, which didn't show up there on three and four and I think that's it I think that is it so this one defaulted if we go back stop play take it back oh that's, I lied that's on four and five up on the preview monitor or program monitor um, we switched a couple of cameras so some of this stuff will, will uh, overlap a little bit um, over on this side here we have the bin. Uh, we have the ability to browse. So if there was uh, other items uh, on like a, a transfer drive or some sort of a flash drive, you can plug those into any of these kind of plugs and get them on here. Um, a lot of that stuff is pretty straightforward. You have the recycling bin, which is all stuff that's been trashed. Uh, this looks like it could probably get deleted. So if we use this and come down here, empty recycle bin, yes, all that stuff's gone. You have the ability to search, say this had a lot of space on it, which ours does. It's got eight hours and 40 minutes on it. Um, a storage. We have some videos in here in Alan's class. You have some in bin two. So if you double click on it and it'll bring it up on whatever is selected or highlighted here. So this one looks like it was a video. Uh, that one's also a video. Uh, this has audio here as audio playback. So you can go anywhere between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like seven playbacks um, for different channels. It might even be eight. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, eight channels of playback. And 
so there we are on those ability to make that smaller it gives you the info here if you wanted to make a playlist you can put a whole playlist of stuff in here so say we wanted to add all of these into a playlist we'll select them all and what it'll do is it'll start converting into a playlist or something that can be played there um back into the clip mode because I don't really care about that today let's go back drag some video down here you have your controls for here so you can go back backwards you can rewind you can go frame by frame on these ones you can forward and you can jump uh, you can have it loop you have E to E so if you bring in your points here oops I didn't set those right. So you have a you have a start point end point that you can jump to, or you can actually set them where you want to start and end. So say you only wanted to play this much section, it will loop those those areas. So we hit play. La, 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 la. And there they go. We can also do 3D sync. Be able to sync playback mode. E2E must be unselected. Alright, so. That's playback. Uh, you can also set durations on stuff. Um, so that'll give you the total time for that clip. You can also lock this so nobody can play with it while it's being played. Uh, you can also unlock it. It's up to you. Uh, remote. I want to see this allows it to be controlled down here. I don't believe so though. Or it allows it to remote send it out over the network. Something we don't get into here. Um, transfers. And then you have the config for this. This is all the uh, playback and how it's set up I've never been into this um, other than I think it allows you to change some of the settings on what's playback and what sizes of formats you have on P1 or P2 what settings you have for transfer in on media that comes in from flash drives and I think that is basically this whole thing <laughs> summed up uh, I've had this freeze up on us, um, which kind of stinks because it runs very well and then eventually it'll just die. Uh, we're still recording our 37 minute long thing here. We can stop that. We're no longer recording. Stop slashing here and stop slashing up there, but we'll continue playing back. Alright, so I had to switch cameras due to some stuff, so I'm going to try and get this as best I can. So our playback is here, or our recording is here, which if you go in, there's two ways of operating this. Uh, you have the screen here, or you have this screen here, and then you also have keyboard and mouse here. So the keyboard and mouse to me is a little more function running. At least to make this work. So, playback is here. Uh, if you go into system and you go to switch to workstation mode, this will allow this monitor to become functional. And it will gray out the playback and record here. Um, but it doesn't disable these functions. You can still go through here and pull up stuff. This is just a little bit more intuitive on this side. So record, uh, this will have everything that's coming into the video recorder. And then we have video playbacks here and here. Uh, so if I want to cue something up, 
all you want to do is you have your Q over there and you can drag and drop it into there you know, or you can grab a bunch of stuff and drag and drop it in there so now we have some items here that will play continuously um, down here you have pretty much the same function you select what you're looking for um, and then switch it over but because we're in workstation mode uh, we're going to have to play it through the computer here so if we hit play on this that will play that clip forever and ever and ever which is fine and then we have our camera how to use dummies thing and you'll see those show up on the monitor screen in the two spots where they're being played so those look like they're four and five on the inputs and that looks pretty good for us here you have the ability to import stuff uh, it's got to be on a FAT32 or NTFS file format for this to work. This Grass Valley Scorcher seems to work on Windows um, for playback and recording. And you can also export the recorded stuff out if you want to. Um, so to record here, you come up, select this, hit record, and then now it's actually recording what we want it to do or what's coming out on the program. So if we slide back over to our switcher here and we go into here's our program. So now we're on camera one. It changes on the screen there. I'm going to switch over to camera two. And then four is our tornado. And number five is a how to video. And that's all being recorded right now as it goes in. Um, you'll also see audio levels. As I work my way over, I'll kind of go through that and how it works. Um, but this isn't a super low level stuff. This is more the high level of how this is working, how to get it up and running, and how to troubleshoot it. Um, Two ways to transition stuff. You have the cut and an auto trans. Um, if you wanted to select a different transition, you can do like a wipe. And then these buttons up here allow you to wipe a certain way. So if we do like a corner into the edge, and then we go up to our transition out, I'll auto transit, and it goes across the screen. The next one will come up will be just be a straight dissolve, and that's set up as the default. Um, you also have this transition T-bar here. So I'm going to transition with that T-bar, and you can actually select how fast you want it to transition. You can do a slow transition or a fast transition. And then that's just done by running this lever here. That's pretty straightforward. Um, back to our auxiliaries so I'm gonna switch uh, we're looking at the monitor um, on camera 2 uh, which is the monitor in the green screen room so I'm back on auxiliary 2 and then I'm gonna select like 4 and then out there we now have either the video that's being played back through the Grass Valley switcher or we have our other playback which is also in there and we can switch between that um, and that's with auxiliary 2 and then your aux now becomes active aux 3 um, isn't set up on this function in here um, but it can be used for keying if you want to key it out um, we just don't have a use for it so we are using 1 and 2 only in this studio That is playback. That's the switcher. That's the transition. Uh, you also have the ability to key out stuff. So you have three different key selects, and then you have the transitions on them. Um, this might take me a second to get it up and running, but we'll do a chroma key, and then we're going to want to select what color our chroma key is. 
we should be able to go into a green unless I'm just blowing past it. And green. All right, there we go. So, and then this push will set your key. So, on our auxiliary, this key will become important. We'll want to select like camera one. We'll set here. We'll initialize that, and then camera one should now be our key. And then we'll want to activate it there by coming out that. Sometimes takes me a second to get it going. All right, there we go. I figured it. So our key for select one is going to be, we're going to key out the green on camera one. Our background will be camera two, which is showing the monitor there. Okay, and then we want to make sure our key is active. So on this monitor, we're showing two as the program. The preview is camera one, and then if we want to add in all background or key which is the overlaying layer we press the dissolve or the auto key one trans and that'll get you a very very quick green screen setup um, from there you can also run different backgrounds so in our preview we're seeing the tornado just as the background or we can even run the video So that's camera one, camera two. And that's what we have coming out of here. Our video stopped. So let me start this video up again. Start this back up again. So now we're playing. We have that on five. And so see, now I can then bring in five as the background video over the curtain or I can go back so there's a lot of things this function or these, these can actually function as uh, it just depends on what you're looking at to do uh, you also have the ability to do boxes with key 2 or key 3 select so if we do key 2 And we're going to do an auto select on that one. We can even do, do a DVE, uh, which is essentially a box. And then we're going to select input four. We still want one. Uh, no, we want four on that one. And we're going to do trans two. And then now we have the ability to move this or make it smaller and put it anywhere on the camera. So, now we have this box on screen. We can make it bigger, we can make it smaller. We can fly it in if we want. There's a lot of options that can happen on this. And that's with Trans2 DVE. You hit select two for key and then your input. So now if we want to do three, we can do another box in there. We'll select that. Our input will be four again. So I think that has just standard video graphics on it. We'll do transition three. And then now what we want to do is same thing. We want to resize and position wherever we want to. Or we can do an auto select, which will give you like this overhanging halo or you do like a 50% and this is just all trust stuff we're playing with on these control knobs here
Um, if you really want to get into the system, if something's like messed up or you need a status on something, everything on this top section here is going to control the system. And you have your different items here. So you have status, option, system, reference, config, reset, user, press, save, load. Um, I don't think I've ever had to use the bottom ones here, just the top ones here, and then these, these buttons here to actually navigate the menu. If it's lit up, it's a function. If it's not lit up, it's not a function. So you hit menu, takes you back out to select the menu. So now I want a status, and it'll give me the status of what this is going on here. So you have some of the details of what we're working with. You need an option. There are no options on that one. So under system, you have the different modes that this can go into. Um, I don't think we've ever had to go into this and change anything directly. Most of the stuff will just be ran as default. Um, the two couple of things we have had to verify is like under the reference, make sure the, the format size is set up to whatever this TV is setting it up for, that everything's running correctly. Uh, if you start changing this stuff around, it gets funky. You also have an external reference source, um, so you can actually change this. You have either internal or external. Um, that controller down there that we had turned on separately where it popped the front off, that is that reference source that we're looking for on this. Um, OSYNC 1, none of that stuff really applies to this. And then a sync, um, you have sync or no sync. We want it to sync because that's always a good thing. Everything talks right. If not, what we were noticing, if this controller that was over here was turned off, up here we would get this long, uh, it almost looked like the frame was sinking. So it would just do this, this really slow pan through the screen over about mm, two minutes or so. And then the whole screen would just continue the cycle. So that's the menu. If you want to get into the config, uh, you can actually set up what the inputs do. So you can select what channels do what here. Um, I wouldn't get into it if you haven't had a need to get into it, um, unless something's substantially messed up. Um, if I had some P2 media, which I don't have, I could show you how this Panasonic one plays. Oops, let's throw that back in there. This is pretty much the same thing as this guy. We haven't had this one fully functioning yet. Um, I don't know if that's because we just haven't used P2 media or whatnot. Um, that's what we have. So we have volume control here. You have uh, the ability to put in cards here. This should keep it from closing all the way uh, when there are cards there or stuff sitting out. Uh, that way these cards don't get crunched. There's also some extra slots over here that you can put in additional USBs, uh, Firewire, uh, SD card, stuff like that if you need to in this guy. This one's a little clunkier and doesn't accept every media. Um, you also have ESAT on it too. That was the other thing it has. Um, but for P2, this thing works wonderfully. Um, allows you to select clips. If you had something on P2 media, 